All right, so let's start with the part three of the Pokeball uh, ball bounce. Uh, but this time we're, gonna, we're going to eliminate a lot of the counter animation from the transform and the parent animation of part one and part two to kind of simplify the, simplify the process using bones or armature in Blender. Okay, so first is that we, we need to make sure that the ball's uh, pivot point is at the center. So I'm providing everyone with a link to this file so that anyone can join in. Uh, there'll be a link in the description of the, uh, of the uh, video, okay? Uh, if you are using the file before uh, where the pivot point is at the bottom, change to this one because we want to make sure that this ball is rotating at the center so that we can do all the animation for it. Another thing is that um, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the, uh, the ball's position is also uh, resetted. So the rotation used to be 90. So I simply went to object and apply the rotation so that we don't see any values here. Everything set to 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 on the scale. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to press number 1 right here. And I'm going to add a, uh, an armature to this. So add, and I'm in the animation tab right now. So add armature. You will see the bone added right there, armature. And um, we're not seeing it right now. I could show it to you in wireframe mode. But we want to see this uh, so that when we're working, uh, we could actually uh, um, select the bone and uh, manipulate it, so on and so forth. So let's make sure that we could see the bone in front right here. So while the bone is still selected with the armature selected, click on the... Uh, the object data property of the bones. It's this uh, green looking uh, stick figure. And then go to viewport uh, display and make sure in front is checked. All right. So now uh, we're also going to go and uh, well, I'm going to turn on my screencast here so you could see what's happening. So we're done with that one. Okay. Now we just want to make sure that it's as tall as the, uh, as the ball right here. So while the uh, armature is selected, let's go to edit mode. Select the top. I'm going to go to the move tool here along the z-axis. We're going to make sure that uh, the bone is. Uh, we could actually go like that, but uh, it's easier to grab when you can see parts of it. Okay. All right. So we're going to make it as uh, tall as that one. Um, uh, maybe just two would be okay. Two right there. So we want to make sure that uh, the length is at two, so that the uh, control ends right here okay so um, when we are done with the bone setup uh, we just need uh, an object um, uh, let me go to object mode here we just need to go to the uh, um, object constraint right here later on but let's first uh, combine the two so first uh, we want to make sure the armature is the parent of the ball so we're going to select the sphere right here okay we're just going to call this one ball this is the child okay so we're going to select the ball shift click the bone kind of like before with the empty and then control p now you have an option to armature deform automatic weights remember we set the empty before as a parent object now we want the bone to be the parent with automatic weights once we do that we can da uh, we can now manipulate the bone or the armature the same thing as the parent in part two. So if we move the bone, the ball follows. Okay, and we could actually select parts of the. Uh, um, I'm sorry, the the bone right here, uh, where we can scale it along the z-axis, and then we could do the scaling. So what would be the difference between this and the empty? At this point, there's none, right? If we scale the ball along the z-axis, we're not maintaining the volume. Remember. Part of the principles of animation is um, solid drawing and appeal, and part of that is maintaining volume whenever you exaggerate the ball. Okay, so now in order to do that, we need to do X and Y also, which is a counter animation again. So we don't want any of that. So what we want to do with the bone is give it an object constraint right here, and then maintain volume. Okay. We want to free the axis on Z strict. So basically what you see right here, just move the axis from Y to Z. Okay. So what's going to happen is when I scale this along the Z axis, as you can see, it's maintaining the volume automatically for us. So eliminate a lot of the uh, counter animation from before. There we go. All right. So that's good stuff. So now we're just going to animate along the Z axis. 
okay and then scale it oops sorry here and then while a, we're scaling it like this even though it's kind of uh, crooked and skewed you can uh, select the ball and do rotation of the ball and it follows it will rotate correctly based on uh, however you squash it so now our ball is rigged and it's good to go all right so I'm going to select the bone so we're animating the ball for rotation we're animating the up and down movement and the squashing using the bone all right so I'm gonna reset that to one all right let's get started so I'm gonna go to number one right here okay so same thing 1 to 25 okay uh, we do want the uh, ball to be uh, right now minus one it's on the ground okay and I if I remember this correctly uh, we position it on seven I think so seven okay that's the highest point on frame one so the same thing as before we right click here on Z axis we're animating the bone remember that the ball is only for rotation okay insert single keyframe we go to frame 25 same height right insert single keyframe and we let the ball landed on 10 okay uh, on the ground because we need to do some squashing right so minus one it's on the floor right click single keyframe and then 16 also minus one yeah insert single keyframe so we play this animation same bad animation as before right because uh, we need to go to our function curb to fix the uh, trajectory of that okay so let's do that real quick then we'll apply the squash right so I'm gonna go change the dope sheet right here to the graph editor and we know the culprit of that one would be this two the frame 10 and frame 16 okay and we know for sure that we want to keep this uh, kind of straight right here last time we press V as in victory we went with vector okay when you go to vector it keeps this one kind of straight and then it gives you kind of like free uh, handle type right here so let me zoom out here uh, let me just make this go up faster by selecting the handle then pressing G to move it okay so I'm just kind of hit vertical on that one this one the same thing press G to move it well, after you select it press G to move it now we can watch this it's now bouncing correctly we just need to add the uh, squashing all right so uh, let's go back to the dope sheet here so you can see that uh, using uh, keys okay all right so uh, for the uh, Z animation uh, we no longer using I to animate XYZ because now we have maintained volume right so we're only animating Z now so we have simplified the animation now by eliminating two axes in our animation so here uh, we're going to add a um, keyframe on Z with basically no squash right and then on 16 we can add uh, insert keyframe also a snow squash right here okay and then we just go to 13 where we need to scale this one and it maintains volume so we just gonna go like so okay I went with maybe 0 0.5 0 0.5 maybe about halfway insert single keyframe and then if we watch the animation now right here there's that okay so what if we want to add some exaggeration to this okay so we can do that um, uh, right now basically we have recreated part one and part two using a rig animation right so let's say we want to add more exaggeration to this we want it to start kind of getting long on its kind of way down right here right so we know for a fact that we want to make sure that this one is kind of long like so so before it lands it has some uh, exaggeration already okay so we want to then keep it normal shape maybe around frame seven so one two three four four frames right here so right here is where I'm gonna keyframe it as no squashing on seven right click it insert single keyframe okay there it is and then we'll do the same thing on 19 because we're just kind of mimicking the opposite okay and why we're we doing this well because we're only cycling the loop playback and uh, we can uh, definitely add another part to this where we want to cycle this animation okay so I did that so now uh, 17 and 10 I'm in 7 frame 7 and 10 sorry are the same regarding animation on the squashing right no squashing the reason why we keyframed it here on 7 to keep the ball as a ball shape but once 
frame 10 when it hits the ground we want this to go long like so okay so I went with 1.5 okay and then I'm gonna go replace single keyframe that's the same thing as inserting we're just replacing it okay so now this thing when we play it as you can see it's starting uh, it has an exaggeration animation right there where it's stretching on its way down okay right there so it went like this so now it goes like that it went back to normal right here so we want from 13 to 16 we want to exaggerate that as well I went with 1.5 with the other just to kind of match it replace single keyframe by right clicking it so now let's watch it so now the animation of the exaggeration is right there okay so we are done and we added uh, more exaggeration to the bounce okay you can change your timing uh, better than this one uh, maybe seven is way too uh, uh, maybe because it's trying to drop uh, let's see the difference here because that's where you see a lot of it. maybe I should move this thing so I'm gonna grab those press G change that to five let's see five okay let's see frame five if it's better oh, I think it's better okay let's go right here I'm gonna go to 21 and set up 19 okay so that that thing has it's longer right there and it's all right all right there you go I think that would do and now we just need to animate the ball so I'm gonna select the ball we're gonna animate this rotating right so I'm gonna to go to number three right here side viewport this is on frame one and the ball should be rotating along the x-axis all right so I'm going to on frame one no rotation right so just zero right there so I'm gonna right click insert single keyframe and then um, we're gonna go to let's say uh, frame 10 this is when it hits the ground uh, let's rotate the ball uh, let's say 180 on that one okay and then when it uh, uh yeah let me just move this to 13 which is just the center okay 180 and then when it comes to frame 25 it simply went all the way back around to 360. okay now let's watch it with the added rotation and the bounce okay so uh, rigging definitely uh, very helpful with animation it eliminates a lot of counter animation if you're just doing simple transform animation however having a rig doesn't mean you'll eliminate counter animation uh, you will actually introduce some and you have to do uh, tweaking of the rig in order to eliminate a lot of your uh, counter animation okay so and this is part three uh, in part four, we will add some uh, cycling uh, animation so that uh, we're not just watching 24 frames of this animation. We can watch and put this on a, on a pad and do other animation beyond 25 frames. All right. So thank you for watching. And there's a link to the file on the description so you can open it and play with this file right here.